Hey guys, it's Mike here. Uh, I just built this flying go-kart called the Sky Kart, and uh, if you haven't checked it out already, make sure you check out my other video where I show you show this thing flying. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you uh, some of the uh, construction and how I did that. Note, these are free plans available on RC Groups, and it was created by users Leadfeather and Motorhead, so I can't take any credit. Check the video notes for the link to the thread. In this video, I'll cover the materials I used, but not necessarily what's recommended in the thread. However, I'll try to point out the differences as I go along. There are seven parts to cover in this video. We'll cover how the sky cart works, what you need to know to get started on building it, go over the foam and tire construction, cover servo and control installation, talk about final steps, and then in with what I might do differently. First, let's discuss the basics. The Skycart is a four-channel EPP foam based RC plane slash go-kart. The four channels are throttle, rudder, and elevons, which work as elevators and ailerons. The high angle of attack on the motor, combined with a rectangular horizontal surface, helps provide lift. Two side pieces and the center vertical stabilizer provide stability. The rudder and elevons are used for turning on the ground and in the air. To make turning the most effective on the ground, you typically turn the rudder in conjunction with the elevons. When on the ground, the elevator part of the elevons don't do a lot except launch the sky cart into the air with a quick elevator stick up and then down motion. You can also get a takeoff by driving on bumpy ground, driving into the wind, or going over a ramp like the pitcher's mound at a baseball field. Taking off from a flat parking lot is doable but more challenging. When in the air, the elevator works with typical pitch up and down. Because the sky cart uses elevons, you need a radio transmitter that does delta, aka elevon mixing, or buy an inexpensive delta mixer. I would recommend the sky cart for any first time flyers. The design reminds me of a nutball. It's simple to fly and forgiving. Just be sure to keep your flight level using the aileron or rudder control. To build it, it helps to have some RC and foam scratch building experience, but it's good for first time builders too. I'll put links to the items I used in the video notes. Don't worry if you don't have the exact items here, just improvise or use something close. Mine weighs about 13 and a half ounces, but the thread suggests an eight ounce weight but mine still flies fine, even though it's a little bit heavy. I'll suggest some lighter options along the way if you're concerned about weight. Download one of the character graphics from the RC Group's thread, print it out, tape together the pieces, and cut around the border. Note you'll have two sides to the graphic. Also download, print, and cut out the four tire graphics. Using a new hobby blade or utility knife, Cut out your foam pieces using these dimensions. You'll cut out the main wing and two side pieces. I use 9mm 1.3 pound EPP foam. Don't cut out the piece for the vertical stabilizer yet. For the main vertical stabilizer, spray the back of one of the character printouts with spray adhesive. Glue it onto a foam sheet, then cut out around the border. Note for more stability, you can add tabs in the bottom of your vertical stabilizer that fit into notches later. Spray the opposite side of the foam sheet and carefully attach the other character printout side. For front support, on the bottom of the main wing, cut a slot for a 3mm carbon fiber tube a half inch back from the leading edge. Hot glue it in. Repeat the same for the rear support tube but this time cut the slot a half inch in front of the elevon hinge line. For rear axles, I use six inches, three millimeter carbon fiber rods. Tubes work okay too. If your tires are wider than one inch, you'll need to cut the fiber tubes that are longer than six inches. 
cut slots on the bottom of the elevons for the rear axles two inches from the tail edge of the elevon. If you're using one inch tires, you'll want to have one and three quarter inches sticking out. Cut the hinge lines for the elevons on the back of the main wing and the rudder on the vertical stabilizer. You want to cut each side at an angle around 45 degrees. It doesn't have to be exact, it will still work. Notice I used a metal straight edge to get an angle. Rub some welders or beacon foam tack glue on the edge of the hinges. Let them dry 20 seconds, then push the hinges together to let them stick. You can reinforce the hinges with strapping tape if you wish. You just need to spray it with some spray adhesive first. Now it's a good time to paint the pieces if you wish. Hot glue the side pieces to the main wing. To make the front axle, take your 6 inch wire and measure 2 inches from the end of the wire and make a 90 degree bend. Measure an inch and a half more and make another 90 degree bend in the opposite direction, but make sure your bend is in the same plane. You should be left with 2 and a half inches on the end. Slide the 2.5 inch in into the carbon fiber tube support. Repeat on the other axle. Note that if you're using tires wider than 1 inch, you'll need to increase the 1.5 inch measurement I mentioned. Cut a 1 inch by 1 and 5 eighths inch piece of plastic or thin plywood to secure the axle in place. Drill a hole in the plastic about a quarter inch from the bottom to allow the axle to fit through. Place the axle inside. With the axle perpendicular to the main wing, glue the plastic in place. Repeat for the other axle. In the front of the vertical stabilizer, cut the slot where the stick motor mount will go. Solder bullet connectors to your motor and ESC if they don't already have them installed. Attach the motor to the mount. Hot glue the motor mount into the slot. Use hot glue to attach the vertical stabilizer to the center of the main wing, making sure they meet at the front. If you want, you can create notches in the middle to lock the pieces together. Hot glue the motor mount supports to each side of the motor mount. Now for tire construction. I used one inch thick foam from Home Depot to make my tires. The form suggests using EPP foam the tires are 4 inches in diameter. I used a 4 inch hole saw to cut them, but you could just cut them with a sharp blade. Use a marker to mark the center of the hole. You'll need to know that later. Cut 4 tires. Sand the tread part smooth. Cut 8 2 inch circle disc from plastic gift cards or old credit cards. Cut holes in the center for the size axles you need making the holes just slightly larger than the axles. These will be the wheel hubs. Note the front axles are smaller than the rear ones. Cut notches in the sides of the disc and bend them over 90 degrees. Push the disc into the center of each tire, lining the center holes together. Hot glue them together, repeat for the other side of the tire and for all four tires. Spray paint the tire black if you wish. Cover the tread of the tire with black duct tape for durability. Hot glue the printed tire cover onto each tire. Make sure that the center of the cover is in the middle of the hole. Cut a four millimeter long piece of fuel tubing, just large enough to fit over each axle. Slide the tubing all the way against the main wing. Use CEA or super glue to glue it in place. You can also use a glob of hot glue if you don't have fuel tubing. Put a tire on each axle. Cut another 4 mm long piece of fuel tubing just large enough to fit over each axle. Slide one onto each axle and glue into place. Make sure to leave a little room for the wheel to turn. You can also use a glob of hot glue or an actual wheel collar to keep the wheel on. Now for servo and control installation. Plug each servo and the ESC into the mark ports on the receiver. Turn on your transmitter and plug in the battery into the ESC. Center all your control surfaces. Turn on delta mixing on your transmitter, or if you don't have the delta mixing, 
hook up a standalone delta mixer into the marked elevator and aileron ports and plug the elevons into the other end of the mixer. Determine servo mount locations and trace around them with a pen. I installed my elevon servos 4 inches back from the leading edge and 1 inch from the side edges. I installed my rudder servo about 3 inches in front of the elevon hinge line. Attach servo arms to servos with screws. Cut the servo location a little smaller than the outline mark made. Don't glue it in yet, just put the servo in the slot. Install one end of your control rod into the servo arm. Let it run straight back to the control surface. Mark a line where it crosses. Put a control horn on this line and move it to where it just reaches the hinge line. Cut a shallow slit in the foam and put the control horn in. Don't glue it in yet. Cut the control rods to length and attach the other end of the control horn. Test servo movements and confirm they move in the correct directions. Reverse the channels if necessary. When you're happy with the movements, hot glue the servo and control horn in. And now for final steps. Determine placement of your receiver, ESC, and battery. Once you do that, I recommend you attach each with Velcro. Install the ESC on the right side of the plane, on the side. I installed mine here. Install the receiver on the left side of the plane. I installed mine here. The CG should be about 5 to 5 quarter inches back from the leading edge of the main wing, which is important for the next step, battery placement. It's a good idea to be ready to move your battery forward and backward to help meet the CG of the plane. I had to put my battery all the way in the front, right below the motor, and I had to cut out a slot beneath the motor to get it to fit because I had more weight in the back of my plane. If yours is lighter, you probably want to put the battery on the right side of the plane. You can install a longer strip of Velcro so that you can move the battery forwards and backwards. Install your propeller and prop saver if you have it. Turn on your transmitter and plug in the battery to the ESC. Test all the control surfaces move in the right direction. Rudder stick right moves the rudder right and vice versa. Aileron stick right moves right elevon up and left elevon down and vice versa. Elevator stick down moves both elevators up and vice versa. The elevon should move about plus or minus one inch and the rudder should move about plus or minus one and a half inches. Ensure the prop is moving in the correct direction, meaning you should feel the sky cart move forward as the throttle increases. If it doesn't, simply unplug any of the two wires going to the motor and swap them. Also, make sure the prop is on the correct direction, which typically means that the numbers printed on the prop should face forward. Now let's cover some things that I might do differently on my next build. I might try a smaller battery. I used an 800 milliamp 3 cell. I'd probably go with a 500 milliamp 3 cell. I'd try using lighter control rods for the elevons to help keep the weight down. I move the rear axles off the elevons and onto the main wing so you don't put too much stress on the elevons. I'd place the rudder servo further towards the front of the cart just to keep more weight forward. I might put the rudder servo right in the middle of the cart right beneath the main vertical stabilizer and use a double sided servo arm with control rods on both sides to provide even push and pull with the rudder movement. You can see how my rudder pulls more to one side than it does the other. 